Hey, it's Max Convexity. I hope everyone's having a great uh, evening here. We're going to take a look at these defiance funds, see where their profit boxes are and what the strategy is for tomorrow. And we'll also look at some other high yield ETFs. I'm sorry, I the somebody told me the volume or several people told me the volume was low in my last update. And I noticed that too, but I don't know why it did that. I have a microphone that I use and, uh, you know, so it wasn't like I was speaking into the computer and didn't get close enough. Uh, I mean, that used to happen, but now that I have a microphone, that doesn't happen. But uh, I don't know why it did that. Anyway, we're going to try it again and see if this is any better. All right, so Triple QY, these guys trade NDX options. These guys sold 163 1870s. So the 1870s, their strike, but it's also their max profit. So if we close at 1870 or above tomorrow, we'll make 2.2 million. All right, there must be an economic number coming out tomorrow because today's option pays a lot more. I, I hardly ever watch the mainstream media, but I bet CPI is coming out or maybe uh, Powell is speaking. Does the Fed meet tomorrow or something? I bet something's happening tomorrow. I hardly ever watch the news, but I can always tell by the daily option prices when they're jacked. It usually means we have an economic number at 7.30 in the morning. All right, so let's take a look at the profit box on... All right, on the SPX, I have multiple profit boxes nowadays. That profit box up there is IVVW. But this profit box right here is tomorrow's profit box for JEPY. Let's look over here at NDX. That's the one we were talking about. They sold the strike at the 18070, which is right here. The top line is always the strike price. And they want to finish as close to the top line as possible or above it to make a max profit. But if they finish the constellation prices, if they finish anywhere in the box, they make some profit. But the, the grand prize is right on the top line or above. All right, so that's NDX. Uh, it's a pre and you can tell the profit box is pretty good size. It's pretty tall. It's is taller than some of these other ones. Maybe not a whole lot, but anyway, let's look around and see what else we have. All right, we have Jeppy. I've already showed the profit box for Jeppy, but its its option is also priced about 20% more than yesterday, so I think something's definitely up. They sold the 5160 270 times. They got yeah, 2053, so you have to subtract 2053 from 5160. And you get this number right here, which is the break even, 51, 39, 47. So they have to make at least that number to make something. And if they finish at the strike price or above, they'll make 554,000, which brings them, which will bring them to 13 cents positive on the month. Today's big win was a nearly a half million dollar winner took them to six cents positive on the month. Nice job, guys. Dividend estimate, 60 cents, which is exactly what they paid last month. These guys are doing great. Let's check out old IWMY. So these guys had a two-day option. That's why there's a blank line here. I didn't miss anything. But actually, I kind of... Anyway... I just left a blank line to indicate kind of they didn't have an option that day, I guess. And the two-day option, I just left it in Friday's line. What I really should have done is taken this expiry price and put it down in Monday's line. And then, anyway, you guys figure out what I did, though. I put it, I just did it there, and then we didn't have anything on Monday. Because the Monday option's in Friday, let's just say that. So anyway, here's today's option right here. I kept all the estimate numbers the same. I mean, this what counts is this estimate. We're at dollar ten on the divvy right now. Uh, what is going on with this? Why do I have an extra number here? Gosh darn it! 
I didn't mean to do that. Okay, I'm sorry about that. In any event, what do these guys do? These guys sold the 2035 strike 667 times for 1390. All right. These guys did not get a whole lot than they, more than last time, but the reason is because that last option was a two-day option. That's why that was 17. They're only getting 14 today, but if you look, 14 is more than the day before the last time, which was for a one-day option. Their one-day options are running 7, 10, something like that. Yeah, so volatility is definitely jacked. These guys are going for a total of 927000 It would take them to a positive $0.37 cents on the month. These guys are killing it. These guys are really killing it. Let's see what their profit box looks like. All right. Let's look over here at... Uh, what should we look at? Tress is in the Valley of Death. It's always earning extrinsic premium. Even when I say it's in the valley of death, it's they still have options that are short and in so far as those options decay, they're they're paying the dividend out of the decay from those options. So that's fine. But of course it's gonna be more exciting to report on when they maybe have a net profit from trading also. Because uh you know, because we have a big volatility event and it will make this, you know, have a have an actual big nice trading profit as well. I'm not worried about it, but um, but last time I checked, let's see, we'll look right here. Save trades, trash right there. It's down 12,000 right now is what they're saying. There's the valley of death. It's right in the middle of it, and that's about 12,000. I'll, I'll pull the time forward and watch what the shape of the Valley of Death. It broadens. It broadens, but then you have an Island of Mercy that appears in the middle. I don't know if we're going to land on the Island of Mercy or if we're going to be out here in the Valley of Death. Uh, but there is an Island of Mercy that, that appears. It's also called pinning your strike. When you sell options, I've always mentioned before, the max profit is at wherever the sold strike is. The on defiance, the triple QIs, wherever the strike price is of the option, that's where max profit is because you sell that option. All right. Well, uh, so these, uh, this, is a, this is a combination of four different options, two options that you sell, two options that you buy. But on the two options you sell, if you do what's called pin it, which means it stops on expiration day right at the strike price, pins at the strike price, you can have max profit. And that's that's what the Island of Mercy is right there. That Island of Mercy is just would be the effects of pinning the strikes. I don't think people plan these positions to try to pin the strikes, I, but when you do, it's kind of like a bonus. The, I think the reason this is being put on is somebody anticipates a price movement either up severely or down severely and out of the, uh, out of the range or this is also a long volatility play. Even if price doesn't move out of the range, volatility ticks up. Look at that. Even if volatility just ticks up a little bit, it'll make it where there's not where it's a no lose situation. It'll make the whole thing an island of mercy. Um, by the same token, if volatility goes the other way, if volatility comes in a little bit, and it does sometimes, it'll make the island of mercy disappear. It'll turn into Epstein Island, and then it'll frickin' turn into Pompeii and sink into the sea. It'll be an island of no mercy, Death Valley again. Uh, but anyway, so this is that's why they call it a long vol play because you either want prices to go outside of the you know the anticipated range, which would be up a lot or down a lot, or and or it's it's an and or and or you want volatility to to tick up. 
and that's why these are such good earning plays. I like to play these on stocks that are reporting earnings in the next uh, in the next week, but play them the week before they report earnings, and hope for that the volatility will continue to be bid up on into their earnings report. It's a decent way to play earnings. All right, but I like what Tress is doing. It it could be a good compliment because if the market goes to shit, this uh, Tress should do really well. Okay, so what else should we cover tonight? Let's look at uh, let's look at the buffer report. You guys want to check out the old buffer report? Let's see if we got it in here anywhere. Sorry about this. I should have had it open. It's in here somewhere. I thought I did have it open. I've been designing a new spreadsheet, and so I have stuff open everywhere, as usual. But I'm trying to make a spreadsheet that shows something different, just for fun. Okay, so here's old Mr. Buffer Report. Alright, so here's the one day NASDAQ, um, and there's some other stocks in here that aren't related to NASDAQ, but basically these are related to NASDAQ. Now let's look at the outperformers first, FEPI, YMAG, and QDTE, all killing it. They all got about the same number too, 136 basis points, 137, and 140 basis points. QDTE is the winner though, for sure. Wow. Uh, there's a lot of other good ones. Triple QI had a had a nice performance. ULTY uh, not so much, but XDTE also outperformed the market. Triple QI got about 60% of the upside. JEPQ got about 70 or 80% of the upside. Let's check out the single stocks. Of course, Misty's the standout for doing poorly. But the outperformers were AIYY outperformed, XOMO outperformed, Infly outperformed, FBY outperformed. Uh, some of these other ones did too. Uh, MRNY outperformed, whatever that one is. MSFO outperformed, AMD, OARC. NVIDIA, Tesla had a nice day up 3.95%, TSLP up 5.92%. See what else we have here. Okay, here's the S&P indexes here. Uh, QDTE is on both lists. Anyway, QDTE, yes, had a great day. Nice job. Nice job. The rest of these were in line. Nothing really stands out. I mean, Bally, Bally looks good. I Spy looks really good. The rest of them were in line. They got about half the upside, just like you'd expect. Just like you'd expect. All right, well, let's look at stock index futures. See what's going on from stock futures. The uh, Nasdaq's down 24 bips right now. S&P down 12 bips. Russell down nine. I would just say that's pretty much uh, charting. Let's zoom out and try to get a little better perspective on it. I mean, yeah, it's just probably just a healthy pullback. Just a little healthy pullback here. Let's look at, uh, let's do this. Let's look at NASDAQ and then let's look at NASDAQ volatility. And 
let's see, move to new pane below. All right, well, volatility is kind of a good thing and a bad thing. When it's going up, it means uh, it means the market's going down usually. But the good thing is, as it goes up, the options they sell bring in more money. Just like the options they sold today, look, it's close to the top of the range. It's a 19.42. It's recently it's been, you know, it's been higher uh, on the 11th, Monday, the 11th. It was higher than it is now. And also Friday, this this past Friday, it was, it was, the vol was higher than it was now, right into that sell-off. So we'll see. Tomorrow ought to be interesting. I'll be back on around uh, around the time the market opens or within, you know, 15 or 20 minutes afterwards, and we'll see where we open up in relation to where the profit boxes are. All right, guys, have a wonderful evening.